Hello, everybody. We're back. Ha -ha. Hey. Um, we, we are joined with Nikki and Miss Jolie Gregoire, who is the newest member to the most fabulous tech Yay. facilitator team in the world. So we are Yay. so happy to have her. Thank you. Thank you. And she is going to talk to us today about classroom screen. So if you've never heard of this, guys, you're missing out. And if you have, buckle your chin strap because you're going to learn some really good things that you can do with this. Um, so again, let us know if you have any questions, drop them in the um, chat. We will help you out there and you can get a copy of the presentation right here. We will drop that in the chat as well. But without further ado, Ms. Gregoire, take it away. Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the online version of Classroom Screen. This is probably my favorite thing that I've used in my classroom. Um, I used to be a big PowerPoint person, but that takes a little bit more time. Classroom Screen's quick and easy, and the kids really like it. So let's get started. So some people are going, well, what is Classroom Screen? Well, it's an online tool that allows you to display some instructions in an easy way. And there's over 13 ways that you can use to help support activities in your classroom and help those students get to work and they know what to do on um, just looking at the screen and know exactly what to do. So, but why use classroom screen? There's three important things. It's to support your class activities, to stimulate engagement, and to help your students get to work and in tune to tools. So let's look at some of the cool ways that they have. So um, to upgrade your classroom screen, um, there's a few tips here that they uh, have for you. Uh, the, all the tools are right there at your fingertips. You don't have to go uh, and find to do a uh, timer or to go do a stoplight or to do a clock for your students. Everything is right there, quick and easy for you to use. So all the tools are right there. Uh, the second positive part is it's easy to start and easy to customize. Um, each day I would do one and each day it would just look different. Whatever we were in the mood for or whatever activity I was doing for the day, that's what we did. Um, just did it real quick. And um, the kids really liked it because um, I made them a little different every day. Uh, it's definitely designed not to distract. It's short and sweet to the point. You can kind of overload yourself with a couple of things up there, but I usually put two or three things and that way they're not too distracted. Um, a plus is, definitely is, is teacher made. So teachers do know what we need in the classroom. So when something's teacher made, um, we know it's going to be something that we can use in our classrooms. Um, biggest part that's very positive to me is that it's free. Uh, now you can upgrade and I'll tell you that later in the presentation about how you can upgrade it. But um, all these 13 widgets that you can use are free. Also to upgrade uh, your screens, you can do that as well, but that's gonna be with the uh, Class Screen Pro and you would definitely have to pay for that. So you can upgrade and save your screens. So how do I get started? The first step is you launch and you project. So for you to do that, you pitch a, um, a classroom screen that you'd like to pull up. You choose any background, put whatever widgets you want on there and you can get started. You can create that screen. Uh, for example, I would like to put a little text box to put what our objective is for the day. So you can put that, that in there or you can just give step by step directions of what you would like the students to do. And the third thing is, as soon as you get that done, the kids can come in, get started on their uh, directions and see exactly what's needed to be done uh, step by step. And they have those easy to follow directions instead of writing them on the board. You can have it up on your new line panel or your smart board or your projector in your classroom ready for the kids to get started when they get in the classroom. So the most popular, there's over 13, there's actually 14 on there, but the nine most popular ones, I'm gonna uh, explain them to you. And then I'm actually gonna show you at the end of how to integrate those. Um, to me, yes, the best one right here is the timer. Um, sometimes, you know, you get to teaching and you're like, okay, I'm gonna give y'all 10 minutes to do that. Next thing you know, it's been 15 minutes. Well, I, to keep myself on task, I put that little timer up there and that helps the kids with time management, especially getting prepared, say for the LEAP test, those portions are timed. So it helps the kids with their time management. So it's not just for you, but it's for the students as well. Um, the drawing tool. Um, this is pretty neat. The drawing tool, you can just do it in one little section or you can actually make it full screen and go straight to the, the drawing tool on your whole panel or your whole screen at that point. QR codes. 
uh, generators, you can do that as well. That's something I would probably use, say, for open house, for parents to scan, to go straight into your classroom screen. So that is something that you can use uh, for that part. Uh, text box, that's where you can just type in your step-by-step -step directions, or you can just put in your objectives of what the students are going to do um, when they come into class. Traffic light. Um, the elementary uh, teachers probably like to use this one a lot. You can put the traffic light on. If it's on red, there's no talking. Yellow, you know, you can maybe talk with your partner. And green light means, you, you know, you could probably, you know, have group time in the activity that the students are doing. Random name. Um, that is something that you can do. Um, what you can do, you can actually type in all your names. You can copy it, say, from a Word document and paste them in there. But to actually access that, um, you would have to probably use the Pro. Uh, I never really used it. I actually used the app on my phone for Google Classroom and just did the random name selectors for uh, choosing my students' names because their names were already typed in through Google Classroom. And that's um, probably the easier way that I did for random name selectors instead of using good old popsicle sticks. Uh, work symbols. Um, you can put that up and you can change the background color. You can have, you know, they can work with a partner. They can work together. They need to have silence or they can whisper. So you can put up whatever you want them to do that particular activity. They know how they're supposed to act. Uh, sound level. You will actually have to, for that, you can pull that up and the students can see uh, a bell will ring when it gets to a certain point. Uh, you can change the background color on that as well. And of course, the program is going to have to access your panel or your projector or your um, smart board in the classroom for that as well. Poll is something that you can do, but it's really used for uh, voting. And that's going to be for your pro users if you choose to upgrade and actually pay for a classroom screen. So those are pretty much the most popular ones. So uh, I want to go ahead and get started. Uh, what you would do, you would just type in classroomscreen.com in your URL, and you're going to come to this screen. So if you have never used it, you would go to sign up for free. So you would click here. It's going to pop up. <clears throat> Okay, and then you can sign up with your Google, your Microsoft. So right here, I've already signed in. I just use my uh, LPSB.org, type in your password, and then it's going to have your stuff saved here. So let me type in mine. Let's see. Let's go back to... You I'm have to click that in. box. There was a box that popped up at the top. I don't know. Yep. If you saw it really there we go. It was there. Free. Okay. So right here, see, I'm already logged in. Okay. Oh, okay. So if I had the paid version, this is where all my stuff would be. Okay. So you could look at your screens, but see, I don't have the paid version. So if I had the paid version, this is where all my stuff would be. Okay. And this is where you'd add your poll, add your screen. So if I saved my stuff and I paid for it, this is where all my stuff would be. So since I don't pay for it, um, my stuff is not saved. I have to make a new one every day, but I'm that type of person that I want something different every day. And the kids look forward to seeing those different things every day anyway. So um, you can personalize it. You know, you can go through and do um, right. Here's where you would actually type in your name list. Uh, down here, you can uh, customize your widgets that you want to use. I like them all there. So I can say, oh, well, today I want to use this and this. So um, I like to have all different ones there. But some people like to have, say, five down there for them to be able to use. And then you can go through and see your account. You can give yourself a nickname and it shows you how to upgrade. I'm going to share with that later. Um, one thing I really liked was the updates. Uh, if something was changed and something new, I could go back and look and see, oh, there was something done right here on the full screen. Safari uh, browsers can now use the full screen button. So I like to see the different things um, that they've changed. Uh, it's nice to see they're updating it and keep it current for, for teachers. And of course, you have your good old help center. You can click there as well and you can type in questions and scroll down and they'll uh, answer some questions there if you have issues there. So that's at if you're actually doing your own account. Let's see. Let's go back to. I got this thingy here. Well, let me close that out. Sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So let's say we're going to go to a screen. So actually, let me show you how to go from here. 
So once you, uh, if you sign up, then every time you type in um, classroomscreen.com, what I did, I actually bookmarked it up here at the top. So every time I would use it, I would just click on it and just pop it straight up. So bookmarking is definitely a way to go because I used it every day. So I would then click launch now. And what's neat is every time you pull it up, it pulls up a different picture. OK, so uh, if you want to change your background uh, right down here, you would see all the different widgets you can use. Again, you can customize that if you would like to. So let's say I want to change my background. This is Pal Patrick. This is just too funny. So here's all your different choices of which you can use. You can do pretty mountains. It tells you that's the Himalayas. Uh, what's really neat, I didn't notice till recently, they have the animated ones down here at the bottom. So look, you can see, you get the arrow down and it's it's moving. But to me, that might be a little distracting. So um, I probably wouldn't use those. So let's see. So I want to go to a add screen. So you can just add some others here. Let me go back. This little light thing's in my way. Hold on. Okay, so if I'm gonna launch, let's do an example here. So let's say you're actually doing space. Um, what my students liked is I would actually incorporate my Bitmoji. So I'm gonna go to my custom background. Oh, and also you can change colors down here too. So I'm gonna, I can go to my Bitmoji right here. So you can pick whatever Bitmoji you want to put in. It likes you to save it. So I've actually saved one to here. So let's say we're doing space. I'm going to open him in. I'm going to actually add that in. So to make this smaller, I'm going to hit this little button down here. And so it makes it full screen there. And if you hit the two arrows, it makes it turns it to full screen. So the kids liked I did my little Bitmoji to whatever topic we were doing. If we were doing plants, it was maybe something with plants. If we were doing a scavenger hunt, I would have my Bitmoji say scavenger hunt. So I just personalized it something different every day. So sometimes I would actually let the students choose uh, what Bitmoji uh, I actually use for that. Um, another thing I wanted to show you on the background is if you look over here to the right, you have your little wheel. You can actually do it from here. Instead of coming down here to background, you can come down here. You can download it. You can take a screenshot and you can look at all the pictures here. So you can actually get to the, the same thing you can da do down here. You can do it over here. But I always just did it from this particular part. So let's go to random name. So this is where you would type those names in and you would use the random name list. Again, for that to be saved, you would have to do, uh, you would have to pay for it. And every time you pull up a widget, if you would click on the settings right here, it's going to actually let you uh, remember the chosen students names, um, all kinds of little sounds. You can even, uh, what I like is you can change the background color. So say I wanted it red, so you can customize it each time. And let's say you didn't want it anymore, you can make it bigger. Of course, you would drag your arrow. If you don't want to use it anymore, you would just exit out. Uh, the dice, a lot of people like to use the dice. You can use one dice, two dice. Let's move it over here. Or you can do the three dice. And again, if you wanted to change the color, you can come over here. And I like it shows you the, um, the letters here for your actual color. So if I wanted the red background and I want to do two, and you could actually, you know, again, make this bigger. And you can just click and drag wherever you want it. So let's say you wanted just this up here and you wanted this out your way. You just click the arrow, makes it go away. If I want to get my bar back up, I'm going to click the little arrow down here at the bottom and it pops it back up. OK, the sound level. OK, so you're going to have to uh, let it allow to use to your microphone. You would click allow and you can hear every time I talk. And you can see it's going to change it up and move it up and down. You can make that bigger. Again, if you wanted to change color, you can go over here and change your colors. Close that one out. OK, media. So if you want to insert an image, you can click your image. You can click and drag from your file. You can actually put in a YouTube video. If you want to be able to show an introduction video for when your kids come in, you can just have that YouTube video already right here. So when you come up, you just 
tap your smart board or tap your panel and it's ready to go. And of course you have your webcam as well as you can embed video here as well. Again, always remember you can click this little spot here and you can um, have little extras that you can do on the side. Let's see, let's close him out. Okay, QR codes. Okay, if you wanted them to be able to come in, say you did a presentation uh, for open house or you had math and science night or literacy night or even a book fair in the library, they could come, parents can scan this and go straight to uh, a little project that you have for them as well. So that's something I did not use, but um, parents really weren't able to uh, come to the classroom this past year. So that would definitely be something to incorporate for next year. Okay, so on here, there's really, you know, you don't want to change those colors because that would mess it up. Uh, draw. Oops, let me click and drag him. Erase him. Okay, so you can make it bigger is what I really like. You can make it bigger and you can use your colors. You can just draw. The kids could come up and just have one big screen. So if you're using, say, a you know, a smart board or a new line panel, you won't have to go to the whiteboard. You can just have classroom, classroom screen up and they can just click on draw, make it big screen, and then you can manipulate and do whatever you would like to do. Of course, if you want to race, um, you can do that. You can change patterns. This is something pretty neat. Um, you can put clocks. Kids can come up and do the clocks. You know, you have different um, designs. Uh, I like this for, you know, elementary. They could practice writing their name, which is kind of hard. <laughs> Hadn't done that in a while. So there's a lot of neat things that they could do uh, with that part. Let's see. So music. I thought that was pretty cool. Take that off. So uh, if you're a music teacher, you can incorporate and do notes. So um, lines where you can, you know, show them, okay, on uh, the left side of the paper, you're going to put your name over here will be your hour, your date. So you can actually show them instead of having those lines drawn up. This is pretty neat. I really like this one. So uh, text boxes, uh, sorry, drawing is, is pretty interesting. You can just have it in one little spot or you can have it as the full screen. So I like that you can have it as the full screen. Okay, text box. Uh, this is something I definitely use all the time. If my Bitmoji didn't say something, I would put, say, the objective there, or I would put uh, some bullet points for the students so they would know uh, what the expectations were or what we were going to do for the day. Um, that's really uh, good to keep you on task as well as the students on task. And again, you can click here and you can change the background to whatever color you would like. You can change your different fonts, change the color of your font. You know, you can bold it, italicize it. So uh, you can do exponents. You know, if you're doing math, you can do that as well. Okay, work symbols. This is something pretty neat. I didn't really incorporate this until the end of the school year. Um, so they can know when they come in, okay, this is the expectations for what we're supposed to be doing for a particular activity, um, you know, to be for silence. Then you can have, you can whisper, like, especially if you're doing those kind of um, ask your neighbor shoulder partner activities, as well as uh, group work. And what I liked is definitely you can change the, I'm all about changing the color. So, uh, so it kind of stands out to the students so they know what is expected of them. So that was something new that I kind of started at the end of the year. Okay, your stoplight. Okay, so you can say, okay, there's no talking. Whenever it's red, the rules are red means there's no talking. You know, yellow, you can talk, say, at your table or with your groups. And green is you can maneuver and go around from group to group. So you would do your expectations of what each light means for you. So each teacher can, you know, come up with their own. And again, you can change the background color. I'm not too thrilled about that, but I would personally leave that one, you know, blank. But it's totally up to you. Okay, the timer. This I probably use this one every day. Had my timer up here. Um, again, 
the students thought this stuff was for them. It was really for me for time management because, you know, I taught six classes, you know, 50 minutes. I knew I had to do a certain amount of time on each little activity. And um, this would keep me on track. So let's say you wanted to do something for uh, five minutes. You would just add to five. I actually use this for uh, leap testing. This was their clock that they had up. Uh, again, you can make this as big as you want. Scroll it down. You can actually come over and change your background again. If you wanted to change those colors. But uh, let's see. Let's look at our different options here. So my, each group liked to have a different timer. So I thought that was pretty neat. That's one of them. Sounds like Mario. So you can pick and choose and go through and see which one that you really like. Um, once I decided which one I was doing, that's, that's the one I kind of stuck with. So that's a little annoying there. So, so that's the one that uh, my kids liked and that's just the one we use. So, you know, you can have it class by class if you'd like, but you know, you have to just remember to go back and change that. So using a timer is really effective. Again, it's not just for the students, it's for the teacher as well to keep us, you know, on task of what we're supposed to be doing. So again, that's probably one of my favorite things there too. Uh, stopwatch. Uh, if you're doing any science experiments, this is something good that you can use. Uh, you can, you know, start. So if you're doing an experiment, you can time and, and do this as well. Again, if you want to change your color, you could do that too. And you can stop. So that's something you can use there. Okay, the clock. Um, it's a shame kids these days do not know how to tell time. Uh, so, you know, this could be something useful for you to use in your classroom. Let's see, I wanted to go back to show you how, okay, if you notice when I first did the clock, whoop, wrong one. It shows you the time here, and it also shows you the, dig, uh, the digital and the good old old fashioned clock reading. Uh, my students, I made them figure out how to tell time. I, you know, I taught fifth grade, so uh, telling time, you know, we would practice uh, using this. You can actually click here and um, do it for military time as well, if you'd like. So I thought that was something cool. And again, you can always change your, your background color down here. Okay, calendar. That is something that kids always, you know, was confused. So when is that? That's in two weeks. So this is something, especially when lead testing was coming up, I would say, okay, so today is the 8th. Next Tuesday on the 15th is when we're going to start testing. And we're going to test the 15th, 16th, and 17th. So that way they had a visual to um, to see what I was really talking about. Because sometimes that um, conception of the, you know, days, they're just not getting it. Like, you know, if you say you have five days of school left, they're like, well, what about the weekend? So, you know, you have to explain to them, are you including the weekend or not including the weekend when you're counting down these days? So um, using this calendar is very uh, effective for students as well. And again, if you want to, you can change your colors down here. So colors are always good. So um, once you get your stuff up, let's say you wanted a timer. I'm going to set your timer and I want to do a text box. You know, you have your little text box here. Get him to highlight. Okay, you can bold him, underline, italicize, and then see when you have it like this, you can just click and drag wherever you want it to go. So I would say if I wanted the smaller, I would click off and I would have my little title here. So let's say I wanted it, let's say a little bit bigger. Welcome to school. Okay, so when you come in, you know, welcome to school, you have 10 minutes to do your activity and you can click start. And if you want to get this out your way, you would put, uh, pull the little arrow down and get that out of your way. And then you could just have that up there on your smart board or your panel and the students know exactly what to do. 
Um, another thing I wanted to point out on the side again is um, if you want to get to all your backgrounds, you would click on the, the wheel here. You want to uh, worry about your making your buttons more prominent. I just use a light, keeping them where they are. Uh, if you want to make it smaller, say I got to go to another screen. I would click here. If you want to undo something. And remember when you pop in your bit mode your, or picture, you're always going to have to, uh, you know, crop it down so it's going to fit. And then you can pick, you know, a background color. So that was always kind of cool. You can do that and you could change this if you'd like. So these are the little widgets that you can use. Um, hopefully these are helpful. These are uh, what I like is they're all right here. Things that I like to use that makes my life easier and the student's life easier. They're all right there and I can pick and choose what I want. I can customize that at the bottom as well. So let me go back to, let's see. part that I really like is the basic stuff is free. So what you're included here, you get it's over 13 widgets that you I just showed you down at the bottom. You get a poll with voting, you get group maker, you know, after the sign up, then you can start getting the other things. So uh, if you choose, you can maybe, you know, ask your principal uh, if they would be interested in maybe doing the pro version for you or if you wanted to do a school plan. So that is something that you would have to talk to your administration about, about getting that. Um, I would personally probably use the free version for a while and see if it's really worth it for you. And then you can go for there and say, hey, this is something we really use in our classrooms. We would like to utilize these other uh, options, like how to save my screen, do the poll voting uh, from remote. You know, they can do it, you know, from an iPad in the classroom or their cell phone. If, you know, if you're high school, you know, they can do the voting that way. But you would have to pay for that part as well. So, again, the free version, I would just sign up, use it for a couple of weeks, see if you like it. And then go to administration and see if you would like to, you know, get the pro or the school pro uh, part for your classroom. So I'd like to thank you for being a part of my online presentation for Classroom Screen. Jolie, that was awesome. I love Classroom Screen. I was so disappointed to learn about it after I left the classroom. So I'm yeah. kind of excited to see how I can use it again. So that was awesome. Yeah. Very yeah. thorough. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. I really what liked it. Job. So the best part is the basic stuff is free. And if you like to change yeah. it up all the time, hey, you know, just use the free version. So all about free. All about free. I'm, say, I'm with you right there. There's yeah. enough that we have to, you know, yeah. pay for and stuff. So to have yeah. the basics right there at your yeah. fingertips. And it's all and right there. That's what I love. It's wow. all right there. Make a bookmark and you're ready to go. I love the idea of, you know, having it on the new line panel. Yes. Um, so, and that's up there and very easy for everyone to see. You can yep. even have kids go up and interact yep. with it and do the different things. And so that is definitely something that we need to add into our repertoire of what we can talk about with new line panels. Yes. And, um, sure. and the really thing that I liked is, you know, the handwriting, the music notes, mm -hmm. you know, the clock, all that Absolutely. is there. You don't have to go find it and mm -hmm. copy and paste it in there. It's all right there. And you can make that full screen. Yep, for sure. For sure. Well, All right, the next one up is at 12 o'clock. We have accommodations in yep. tech. So that one's going to be awesome. Um, that's not for another hour. So go take lunch. Enjoy some. Yep. Oh, yep. Survey in attendance because I always forget that. Same thing. Put in your attendance, get entered for a drawing. The more things you attend, the more times your name gets put in and you can win more stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Go yeah. enjoy some lunch and we will see you back here in one hour. Thanks for joining us. Everybody.